So this is a video I've been thinking about for a while. More than just the sawmill, there's a whole lot of infrastructure that has to take place to, in order to mill lumber. This is a great hobby. It can even be a bit of a, an income. Um, this is part of my business plan. I sell a little bit of lumber, custom lumber. I don't really want to stock two by fours and boards and one by sixes and that kind of stuff. It just takes a lot of room up. And of course, if I have 10 foot stuff, somebody wants 12. And if I have eight foot stuff, somebody wants six. It just is a pain to keep inventory for everybody. So if somebody wants to order lumber, I can pretty much, I have enough logs and stock and inventory that I can mill almost anything at any time. This mill's capable of milling 16 foot seven long, and I can go a lot longer if I wanted to add track to it, but so far I really haven't found that, that desire or need. And that brings me to, the, to the, one of the points I wanted to bring up is that when you start getting a mill that will mill a long timber, you know, you're looking at a, I don't know, say a 24 foot log that's this big around. This isn't a, a very big log. This is eight feet long. And at the, looks like this might be the narrow end. The narrow end, it's 19 inches inside the bark. So this is a, this is a normal size log. My little tractor can lift this no problem at all. Full height. This log probably weighs, my guess, 600, 700 pounds. So you take a log twice as long as this. That would give you a 16 foot log, which this mill is capable of milling. All of a sudden my tractor's out of the, out of the range. So. From the tractor that I have, I'd have to buy another piece of, of equipment, whether it's a skid steer or a, a loader, forklift, or a crane or something. Now, I'm lucky enough, I'm actually sitting on ramps. Uh, there's another video, if you wanted to have a peek at that, of these ramps I made with a, a winch that goes on the other side of the mill. And I, I winch these on. It's called par buckling. You put the, uh, the cable over the, the top of the log, and as the cable gets short by the winch, it rolls the log up the ramps and onto here. So I can I could lift up a log twice this size with no without any issue. So step one, number one is to buy a sawmill. That's reasonably priced, 3600 bucks. You can buy a, a cheap entry level um, Princess Auto slash Harbor Freight made in China with probably a, a nine horsepower I'm guessing, something like that, nine and a half horsepower motor on it. And that would give you a, you'd be able to start milling today, probably ten foot long material. If you were building sheds or you had a little piece of property in the woods, you could make you could make a, a go at that, I think. It would be something that would make sense for you if you were a property owner. Take it, leave it in the crate, take it where you want to set it up, set it up. There. This mill here I built a few years ago, and this cost me at that time, with all brand new components, this wasn't any salvage yard scrounging. Um, I researched and measured and, and made sure I was getting what I wanted for materials for the strength of materials, for the length of materials, the size of the motor that I have on there, the hydraulic blade tensioner, the diameter of the wheels, the distance between the two. This is a 36 inch wide capacity. I can mill a log 36 inch in diameter and I can make a face cut 27 inch high. So, which that's pretty, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And it has an electric feed and electric lift. Took the electric lift motor on. We'll talk about that another time. Maybe even in this video, I'm not sure. But so I'm about 10 grand into this into this sawmill. If I were to buy this sawmill, it would cost me north of 20 grand today to buy this same sawmill with that capacity. Um, and I wouldn't be able to do that if I had to. If I if I couldn't build it, I I wouldn't own a sawmill for sure. Plus, there's some maintenance that that takes a, a bit of a skill set to acquire, I guess. And, and being a mechanic by trade, I didn't mind um, entering into that uh, category of maintenance. So anyway, to get back at that, the tractor that I've got, I'm limiting myself to the size of the log, to the equipment that I own. Another thing that people don't consider is where they're going to keep their logs, whether they're going to be mobile, which is a good idea. I've got a good friend of mine, Bill, who used to sharpen my blades, and he is 100% mobile milling. He takes his mill to, to your yard and he mills your logs, leaves you the mess, the sawdust, the slab wood, and leaves you the lumber and he hooks on with his truck and goes home when he's done two or three or four days of milling and he doesn't have to think about that. I've got my house lot here is about seven acres. I've got uh, about a half an acre dedicated to my firewood business and I've got about a half an acre dedicated to my sawmill business. I've got a rack that holds about roughly two-thirds of a cord of um, of slab wood at eight foot long and when that gets full I've been processing it through my firewood processor 
and putting it in a pile and then uh, selling it on Facebook Marketplace or on Kijiji or something like that or wherever I can sell it. Um, try to recoup a little bit of the time that I use to process it. I try to give it away, but it's, uh, it's too difficult to give it away. So you got to have a place to put the, the scrap, the waste. Sawmills make a lot of waste. There's bark here everywhere. When we edge boards, we chip the boards. So we, we do have a chipper for our tractor. That's another expense you got to think about. You have to put this all into consideration before you just pull the trigger on a mill. Now I have a mill. Now what? What do I do? What else do I need? So I'm already up to a tractor and land. Tractor with a, a grapple on the front that will uh, load a log this size. The tractor that has the capacity that's got about a thousand pound lift capacity. And I've maxed it out and exceeded it lots of times. This tractor still doesn't protest. I'm impressed with it. I've got a small forestry winch that I use for pulling logs around here. I've got a forestry trailer, which there's another video that can lift up about 800 pounds and I can load uh, oh, half a dozen logs or maybe even a dozen logs and I can stage my mill from that. That's not a necessity. It's a, it's a great tool to use, but it's more of a luxury than, uh, than a necessity in my opinion. So, so anyway, let's take it from the top. Sawmill, tractor, somehow you got to get the lo logs on the mill. You got to move the logs around, especially if you don't have them organized well. I've kind of got mine organized fairly well. I've got 16 feet, 12 feet, 8 feet, and then eight, everything shorter than 8 feet in different piles. So if I, I can quickly grab the size of the log I need. Um, another thing you have to consider is maintenance on the mill. I just touched base on that a bit, but a big part of the maintenance for me is milling um, a lot of these logs. I have to sharpen the, the blades after I cut through this bark. This log here is pretty clean. Not a lot of bark on it. And it's old enough now, this white pine, that the bark's going to fall off anyway. And uh, so I'm going to get probably 400 board feet, roughly, to a sharpened blade. I've got, I'll bet you, 30 blades ahead in inventory of my own, and I run them till they break. I keep sharpening them. So I have to buy, a, I had to buy a sharpener and a setter. So I'm roughly a thousand dollars invested into the sharpener and setter. Um, so there we are, the sawmill. Logs, staging area, deal with scrap. Um, then where you live, where I live, I can do anything I want on my property. The zoning, I'm zoned properly or exempt even for anything except an abattoir. I cannot build and uh, process uh, live animals into meat here on this property. But everything else, I can have an automotive salvage yard, I can have a welding yard. I ran an automotive shop from this yard for, uh, for a lot of years, made a living at it. Um, so this is this is a, a good fit. I'm very rural, um, an hour from any city, and uh, I'm on a dead end uh, residential street, which I've got great neighbors, and um, I'm blessed to have great neighbors. And I learned the trick a while ago um, about getting great neighbors is to be a, a great neighbor, and you'll have great neighbors in return most of the time. So. So getting a sawmill is often just the easiest, quickest part of the whole, uh, of the whole thing. Um, you need to have an air source, in my opinion, compressor. I do have a good leaf blower, but it, it won't get all the, from especially a, a pine log with a lot of pitch, all the sawdust here has to be blown off the, the works of it. And I do that, not daily, but, but every other day probably. I've got a big compressor in my shop, which is about 75 feet from here, and I've got enough hose that I can come out and blow that all off and make everything like new again. So uh, I guess all I wanted to say, all, of, all I'm trying to, to bring up is think much bigger scale than just buying the, the, the sawmill. I've got a truck, a flat deck truck that I use um, for delivering lumber. I've got a dump trailer that I use for delivering firewood and I can pick up logs with that dump trailer and I've got an 18 foot flat deck trailer that I do some trucking with and uh, I use that for, for picking up longer logs, 16 foot logs and so on. Um, and that's another expense. Those were all I bought new um, and uh, they're aluminum so I, I expect them to last, outlast me probably. I'll be able to give them to my grandkids when, uh, when I'm no longer able to use them. Hopefully maybe they might be interested in this in this bit of a business. So so anyway, keep all that in mind when you decide uh, you're going to be venturing into the sawmill market industry. Um, there's a whole lot more than just the sawmill. So you got to be always thinking, what, am I, what else am I going to need that's going to help me in this? Uh, and you can start small. 
that's going to help me in this business. And, and by all means, start out small. I still have the idea that I want to have a kiln on the property, even a solar kiln, that I can cut uh, slabs, larger hardwood slabs, dry them, flatten them, and then sell them to the furniture market. Um, there's definitely a market for that. I get, I, get a, I get a few calls for that. And I just made a contact um, about buying some black walnut logs as well. So that may soon be in the future. Buy some black walnut logs, buy the truckload, have them shipped here, and then I'll open them up and dry them, flatten them, and then sell them. So, and uh, that that kind of makes me uh, it tickles me to think about about doing that. Keep in mind, I have no interest at all in in working with the finished product of the wood. I'm the first to say I'm not a carpenter. I'm more than uh, capable of uh, rough framing a house or um, hanging a door or something like that. But as far as building tables or furnitures or some of the intricate stuff that my wife builds, she builds um, canoe paddles and uh, pastry scrapers. Uh, she carves beautiful coffee scoops and spoons and makes decorative boxes and urns and that kind of thing. And I just... I don't have that skill set. Maybe it's the patience set I don't have, and and maybe if I worked at the patience level, I could probably do that. But I've got too many other interests to, to worry about that. So, so anyway, I'm not going to wrap this video up yet. What I'm going to do is uh, shut the camera off, start it again, and I'm going to take uh, a stab. Maybe you guys can guess in the comments at how many two by four I can get out of this 19 inch. Yeah, 19 inch uh, white pine log. There's going to be a few knots in it. These aren't for uh, anything. This is for an outdoor kitchen for a friend of mine he's building. So I'm going to see how many I can build. I need to make up 30. I'm not going to get them all out of this, I'm sure. But let's see. Let's see how this goes. i got to move my truck so I can put them on the truck so I can deliver them after. But um, at any rate, I'll uh, restart us here in a second, and you guys can stay tuned and see how many 2x4s I get out of this one log. If you've paid attention this long, you uh, deserve a medal. But uh, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you subscribing. And uh, by all means, comment, like. Even if you don't like the video, thumbs down. It's, it's all good with me. Um, if you've got cons constructive criticism, I welcome it with open arms. If you just want to comment to be negative and mean, not interested. I'll just block you. <laughs> so, but uh, if you've got constructive criticism, I'm more than welcome to... Uh, I welcome it. I like to learn. And you guys have, uh, a lot of you guys have done way more of this stuff than I have. So anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see how many 2x4s uh, go to this log.
So, out of that one log, we got 16 pieces of 2x4. Two um, a couple pieces of 2x2. Two two. Probably one of the 2x4s I can split down to a couple of 2x2s two as well. I got one 2x4 by, by 6 feet long. And I've got a 1x6 and a 1x4. And that was all in about, uh, I don't know, you guys can tell in the time. 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that. It wasn't very long. It's starting to rain, so I'm going to put my tarp over my machine. I've got... Uh, a friend of mine, a customer of mine, I should say, who's promised to put a slab under my mill so I can put a roof over it so I can mill again on when, when days like this come. So that was one more thing that I meant to talk about is you should have a shelter over your mill if you're going to mill in inclement weather here in Nova Scotia. Um, it was beautiful, sunny, 16 degrees this morning when I was making firewood, and now it's uh, starting to cool off. It's about 11 or 12 degrees Celsius and, uh, and raining, even though this rain wasn't supposed to start till overnight tonight. We got it now. And uh, another little detail, you got to spend time making um, stickers when you mill lumber and you got to have a plan where you're going to put your lumber. I'm usually pretty lucky that I get to deliver the lumber as soon as it comes off the mill, it goes in the truck, then it delivers to their house. Um, and then I don't have to worry about stickering it or stacking it or drying it. But I do have some lumber that uh, I keep in inventory dry under tin roof on racks 16 inch stickered uh, to make sure that it, it's going to last as long as uh, as long as it needs to last till it gets sold so um, a couple of times a week somebody will call and want just random um, lengths of lumber I usually can make an order up from what I've got kicking around but anyway that's about all I have to say about this for now just thanks a million once again for sticking around and listening to my ramblings about mills and and uh, what the right thing to do is and I never know what the right thing to do is I just tell you what I do and what seems to make sense for me so and uh, once again thanks for watching over and out everybody